do that and be back okay so before I go much further here what I want to do is I want to make sure that the motor is lubricated properly and that uh, we have uh, everything is in good shape um, before I before I button it up so uh, let me go ahead and do the lubrication and uh, if, if you've seen this before you know the lubrication goes at the ends of the motor right right here right and right here these are um, we talk about these these are <laughs> centered centered brass bearings centered brass bearings are are Pringles right they're, they're, they took brass and they chip it all up and uh, the little shavings and then they and then they press it back together again and that uh, leaves little voids in it and that's supposed to hold the, the lubrication now it does kind of hold the lubrication but the, the issue with the holding of the lubrication is that uh, if there isn't any in there then it oxidizes in there and now all of a sudden you have um, blue right blue oxidation uh, brass oxidation on the insides of the bearings uh, the other thing I'm going to do while I've while I've got it uh, got it open and I can I can mess with it um, is I'm going to take the take the wheels completely off and we're not, not going to trust um, the the pickup to the frame um, I've talked about this in other videos but uh, um, it, it's worth reiterating here or if this is the only video that you've ever seen um, the the pickup on these I take the take that out the pickup on these is like this right you got one wheel over here comes across as a strap here and then the other wheel comes up as a, a strap that we've cut off now and uh, while we can go ahead and solder to this one right this one is not solderable like it sits um, it this this is deliberately machined so that supposedly this does a good job of picking up and it doesn't do a bad job uh, what happens is people lubricate this stuff and then they use lubricant which which is this right good lubricant but what you really want to use is this which is the conductive lubricant right and cleaner that we sell here at the train buddy shop but um uh, that uh, that goes ahead and does it now the, the even better is to uh, pull the side frame off and so we're going to do that and then actually to solder a a wire to the side frame here so you're being very careful not to not to break this right pull the side frame off and then we're going to we're going to solder it's got like another little little piece there we're going to solder a wire to this and we're going to solder it right right in here at an angle and um, so you need to rough that up a little bit so we've got a, a file uh, at at the ready uh, you can't get you have to be careful that you don't get too much in there But you want to just rough right right on the edge of that that rivet So we're going to do we're going to rough the rivet up and, and maybe the the metal up to just a little bit right, Like that And did I do it? Uh, <laughs> did it in the wrong direction, okay? It should be it should be this direction and why, why I say this direction is because we want the wire to come up I want the wire to come up this way, right? And it's going to be a black wire. We want it to come up this way and come out. Uh, this is where, remember, this was where the um, where the gear was, where the where the worm is, right? And so we want that to come up here. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that this goes side to side, right? Goes completely side to side. So even if we bring a wire up through here, it's got to be able to fit somewhere in here so we're going to have to we're probably going to have to on on this side right we're probably going to have to to nick the side frame right right in here right got my my big hand in there right there we're going to nick that so that the wire can come up through there and still make contact 
and you'll see that in just a second. So hold on. All right, as I start on doing these things, I, I something comes to mind here. So you, you don't want, first of all, it must be stranded wire. Don't don't even think about using anything except good stranded wire. This is um, this has got quite a few strands to it. Um, the more strands you have, the more flexible it's going to be. Remember, this thing is going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so uh, if you put solid wire in there, it's going to break. The other thing is you don't want some big old wire in there, right, that's, that's too big. Um, because, again, it's going to have issues. It's going to make it stiff. And you don't want it to be stiff as it's going back and forth. You want it to have good motion so this is nice and flexible this is in uh, this is probably uh i'm gonna say uh, 22 gauge maybe 24 right it's not uh, no no mark on it so i don't know what it is but uh i'm gonna say 22 24 that's probably a probably a good something in there uh 30 32 is probably too light uh, again you're picking up power this is where your major power is coming into the the decoder and actually is going to going to be used um, uh, to power the motor too so you don't want to do anything like that so uh, you want to tin this you want to tin the frame right you may want to turn your soldering iron up a little bit which i forgot to do turn your soldering iron up, up a little bit and we're just going to tin the tin the edge where i'm going to put this uh which is right here and i'm not going to do all of this but i'm just going to show you right uh, it's going to stick to the brass pretty quick right to this brass rivet and um, and we, we need to get some the heat needs to be up right for this because it's a big piece of metal right and you can see it's it sticks pretty good not too bad right not too bad now we can't leave it sticking up like that I mean that's just not going to work um, turn turn your work around where you can where you can see it I'm tinning the wire off camera right now okay T Turn it around where you can see it. I mean, it's not, I shouldn't say where you can see it, but where you can work on it, right? These are not so big that you can't turn them, right? Turn, turn it around where you can, where you can work on it. And now I've tinned it, right? And I'm going to, and I'm going to solder it right here at that corner, right there. Okay. Now I can't, it's, it's already soldered, but it's not flat. It needs to be flat down there, right? So I'm going to continue to heat it hoping that it will flatten out. It's not flattening out very well because the, the heat is not up where it needs to be. We're going to put it back up again. Now we're up to 800 F in about three quarters of the of the meter here. I'm going to go ahead and get some get some solder. Oh, that's nice and hot now. Oh yeah, there you go. All right now you could could put some flux there. See it's sticking to the brass but not necessarily to the metal there we go that's not bad that's not bad now but again here's a, a scenario where if I don't do anything this is this is not I'm not going to be able to get the um, I'm not going to be able to get the the side frame back on because that piece of this is hot so I'm watch I don't burn myself I won't be able to get the side frame back on because that, that solder now is proud of the side. So uh, I'm going to take a little file, right, and I'm going to I'm going to flatten flatten that out because right, I don't want anything to interfere with the side frame, right? So there we go. Right. Let's uh, let's double check our side frame. See see if it's going to go on there, right? Okay. It's a little tough, but there you go. Okay, so the side frame side frame went on right, and the wire is now coming out the side, which is what we're looking for, right? Okay. Now when we put it put it in the engine, right? Sorry, cut some cut some wire here. Is it fisher cutter cutter fish bait. What? No fish cut cut bait or fish. Anyways, um, so here we are, right? And I'm gonna. As I put this up through the bottom, now you see the problem, right? Because where is it coming out? Well, it's coming out. It's coming out right there. And that's on the back side of this. Oh, oh, well, maybe I don't have to do anything. That's that would be cool. Okay. 
Okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So, so it's coming out on the back side, right? which is right here. And that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's not bad because you see when it's coming out the backside like that, now it's going to be running up against this. So somehow we need to to make sure that it's going to uh, going to stay there. We don't want to pinch it with the weight because the weight goes down on top of this. Right? So let's see, you know, the weight goes like this, right? Oh, there's a big opening right there. Okay, there's a big opening right there. And it's going to come up this way, and it's actually going to attach to that to that lug right there. Okay. That lug. And so we're going to probably carve a wire way through the weight right here. Or we can put a hole right there, and that'll, that'll hold that up and out of the way. Ah, yeah, they're perfect. So what I need is I need a hole right there in the weight. Plan. A plan is coming together. Yes. And, you know, um, engines are, for the most part, they're, they're very similar, but they're just, they're just a royal pain uh, sometimes. And so this, this particular one's not turning out too bad. Um, did I do that right? Why does it not seem right? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So right there. All right, well, let me work on that and um, then be back. So again, uh, con continuing with the, with the lubrication um, before we put it all back together again, uh, we have uh, also some, some gear lube. And uh, so you don't need a lot of this, just a, just a little dab is, is fine. Uh, you can add it to add it to one gear and it will actually work its way through all the rest of the gears. You don't have to do much that with that. While it's off here you can cycle through these gears. You want to make sure that the um, that the ends of the of the gears, planet gears or fixed gears, right, are are uh, well oiled. Sometimes they're internal um, bearing sometimes they're external and you can see them right and uh, we actually we can take the wheels off and uh, and do that this we're going to do that later uh, when we get it all back together again but typically you're going to use conductive lube right right at these at these points where the pickups are and where it's bringing lube up and so I wanted to show you that before we Put it all together, and here again, these are these centered brass sleeve bearings. Make sure that they're lubricated well, uh, not necessarily with uh, with the uh, conductive lube, but certainly with the with the motor oil, with the fine fine oil, right? So make sure they're well lubricated before you put it all back together again. Okay, so as a note uh, on this one, um, as I was putting it together, um, I recognized that, first of all, this, this uh, spacer that's on both sides, uh, you can't put that spacer back on after you put this wire on here. There's just no room for it. But the wire itself acts as a spacer, um, so you don't need it. The other thing, though, is that uh, when you're bringing the wire up, um, I got it pinched right here between this and this piece. I'm going to check the other one to see whether or not I did that. But make sure that it's threaded up through right off the edge of this and up through that hole right there. And as we get get to the top, you'll see uh, there's actually holes up in this up in the top already. So I'm going to thread it through through there, right? And on the other side, I'm going to thread it through there. And then I don't have to drill holes. I started drilling a hole here, and I realized I didn't have to do that. So, because there's plenty of plenty of room to thread it up through there, and that'll stay out too of it once it's soldered to that side, stay out of the uh, out of the running gear. So, extra pieces I don't need. Okay, so I'll give those back to the customer. The customer will go, "What are these?" And I'll go, "Yeah, you don't need them." He said, well, "Why didn't you throw them out?" I don't know. One of those guys. Maybe you use it on some other project. 
So um, I'm ready to put the red wire in, and I just wanted to share with you, I've got a, a whole pile of, of wire, different kinds. Um, obviously, this is not what you want, uh, you know. Um, but the, the, in terms of thickness, right, this is, this, is, uh, this is about right, except that the problem is that it's Teflon coated, and because it's Teflon coated, it's very, very stiff. Um, these are too small, right? So this is about 30, 32 uh, gauge wire. This is just right. This is again probably uh, 22, 26, somewhere in that neighborhood, right? And this is just exactly right. So this is the wire that we're going to use. All righty then, you betcha. Uh huh. We're uh, we're about to finish up on this. Um, uh, GP18 locomotive uh, from uh, Lifelike. It's a Proto 1000, uh, which is an older, older style. Well, I'm sorry, it's a Proto 2000. It's in a, um, it's in a, a gray box instead of a blue box, which means it again it was an earlier version. It was one of the first uh, Proto 2000s. And uh, we're putting sound in it. Uh, we put the speaker in. We put the decoder in. Right. And uh, we are just about ready to finish this part up. We've, we've tested the motor. Uh, things look good. We've lubed it and we're ready to put in now the red leads. We put the black leads in uh, on the sides of the, of the uh, trucks. And uh, we've clipped the tops off of the little L shape. And this is, this is classic for both uh, the lifelike uh, proto th series as well as Atherin series locomotives have this um, have this little L shape uh, protrusion that comes up, and that is the whatever side that is. Typically, that's the right hand side truck uh, of the of the trucks. So we're ready to put in the red wires, and we're going to put them vertically this way, right? Uh, and we're going to put them along the sides here. We're going to solder these along the sides, as you'll see in just a minute. Uh, the objective here is to make sure that when the wire is wire is is like this, and uh, the truck is moving back and forth, that in fact you, you get a you get a torsion. Think about it like think of it as a as a group of wires. These are these are stranded wire, and you, by the way, you should never use solid wire. Um, stranded because the solid wire you do this about ten times and it breaks. Um, but stranded wire, you could do this, and e each individual one will break. It'll eventually break. So what you want is you want a situation where instead of it, instead of you doing this back and forth, what you want is you want something where it it twists. And if it twists like that, then you have uh, less mechanical force on it, and it takes longer to break. But it'll still probably break, but uh, be not in your lifetime. So in any ways, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it. So on the side this way this is the way you should always do it and do it at an angle like this so it's straight down so that you get torsion forces on on that joint right there very important that you have those torsion forces on that joint okay and I'm gonna go do that um, you're gonna turn your soldering up iron up a little bit uh, because in this particular case you've got this piece of metal has to get hot enough for the solder to to melt on it you want to tin, pre-tin the wire, and make sure that you get a blob of solder started on that. Um, I don't think I'm going to show that, but I'll show it, show the end. You get the idea. And I'll be back. So um, I oftentimes get questions about, you know, what temperature do you use? Uh, um, uh, you didn't really show us the solder, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the solder. I'm at uh, 400 degrees C or about 750F. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so that's about right for, for this. We're going to get a little bit of, of rosin. Notice I'm at a right angle to the soldering iron. I just put a dot on there. You saw the smoke, right? There's no smoke right now. There's no smoke. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply right the soldering iron to it and see how it slides around it slides around because there's it, it can't adhere to it without rosin saw the smoke right right and notice notice it's not adhering yet right 
and now it adheres. There's a dot there, right? Now if I try to move it with a try to move the dot with a screwdriver, right? It's not moving. That means that means it's on there. Now it's harder to solder to um, to items that are are shiny. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, if if you're having problems, then you might want to rough it up a little bit. Um, sometimes it's it's helpful to just get the item hot, right? Notice it's not moving, right? It's not adhering here. Right, we're getting the item hot. Now we're going to apply the solder. See the dot is not now it's not moving. See it? Okay. All right, that's what you want. You want it to not move, right? Now we got one one side's got a little blob and one side's got a big blob, but it doesn't matter. Now we're going to tin the ends of the wires, right? And what does that mean? It means we're going to put solder on the ends of them. And why are we doing that? Well, it makes it easier to solder to it, as you'll see here in just a second, because if it's got solder, if you're trying to get uh, solder on the wire, again, the wire has to get hot too, in order to get it get it started. Now, both of them have rosin on it. We're ready to do the do the thing. Remember, straight down, straight down. Now we need to get both of them hot. Straight down. Let it cool now. Now it takes, it takes a few seconds to cool because of the size, right? And tug on it a little bit, make sure it's going to stay. It's going to take a few seconds for it to cool. Right, here we go over on this side. Watch your soldering iron. Don't, don't get your soldering iron on things that it shouldn't be on. Like, don't get it on the circuit board. I'm using a circuit board here, just tilt it up so you can see it, but ordinarily I wouldn't do that. All right, now see it's kind of sliding around a little bit, right? You don't try not to have it move while you're soldering to it. You know, get some lumps on it. So I don't like the looks of that one. Okay, just don't like the looks of it. It's it's actually moving, right? But I want to add a little bit of solder to it. I want to put a little bit of new solder on it. I'm gonna put it on my gun. I'm gonna or pen. I'm gonna rotate my pen so that the solder's down. Right, so I don't know if you watch me rotate it with my finger hands, but okay. Now we're going to add. We're adding new solder to this. Kind of a blobby mess, right? Because because we don't have we didn't get this tinned enough. Now we're tinning it. It's it's sticking on there. I just don't like the looks of it. Okay. We're going to do this again. Well. Now the wire is getting hot in my hand, right? So we're going to let that go. Um, it's not the greatest solder joint I ever made, but you get the idea. Um, again, if it's if it's not coming out of there, then it's not a cold joint. Okay. Usually you can tell cold joints by the the brightness of them. If they're uh, if it's got a shine to it, then that's good. If it doesn't have a shine to it. Uh, chances are pretty good it's a cold solder joint and usually the cold solder joints happen when you uh, um, when you move it right when you, as you're as I was doing there uh, but uh, again typically that's what happens all right so um, at this point I want to talk a little bit about um, about orientation um, as you see I've marked on the locomotive forward Right, and an arrow showing which way is forward or on the on the weight. Now, if I look at the look at the cab and how everything's supposed to set, it's supposed to set like this. Okay, um, if I look on the locomotive, this says there's an F here. Uh, that means the that is the front. An old joke, I won't say it, but there's a, there's the front. Right? Why do you need that? Uh, for you need it for guys like me doesn't know which way is which um, Aberdeen and Rockfish the, the railroad decided they were going to do what they call short short hood forward right uh, some engineers some some railroads thought that the long hood should be forward to give them more protection 
Um, and uh, and while that's that's typically um, not always the case, you need to be concerned with that, right? As you as you're talking about which way is the front light or the headlight. So we see a headlight marked on this. The orientation shows the chip, right? And the chip is the same. Headlight then would be this way, and this way is forward. So that's correct. Backup lights this way. Now, notice there's a whole bunch of other things here that are that are kind of backwards. Um, I've actually written right on the side here, right rail, right red, left rail black. But notice I have red and black backwards. Um, that's my fault, right? I should have realized that that was wrong, and I should have done different colored wires. However, the color of the wire is not really important here. What is important is that front right rail pickup, right, which is right rail pickup, goes to that, that lug. Ordinarily, that would be red. Ordinarily, this would be black. Same thing in the back here, right? Left rail, right rail. Left and right are determined based upon which way the engine is going forward. It depends upon that F. Very important as to, to know which way it is. Now, in DCC, we can reverse that. We can actually, in the, in the commands, in the CVs, uh, uh, the command variables, we can actually change that and reverse it. Um, it typically, you can do that. Uh, the issue is if you take this and put it on a DC layout. Now, um, most decoders will work, most engines that are DCC will work on a DC layout because all you have to do is get to five volts and the little little processor goes, oh, I'm on DC because it doesn't see any signal and it goes ahead and goes. Um, but it will, the direction it goes is, is related to how you've connected these wires. So if I, if I did this, if I crossed them over, right, the decoder doesn't know which way is forward and it would go in the reverse. Uh, the point being, try to try to maintain this consistency: red on the right, left, black on the left, or right rail to what it tells you is right rail, left rail to what it tells you is left rail. Again, the NMRA's uh, color code is red on right, black on left, which is opposite of what I did here. Now, I want to show you something else here too, uh, while we're at inconsistencies. Notice that that where the motor lead is coming up from the bottom here, there's a notch. It's hard to see here because it painted this black, but there's a notch right there. And that notch is meant for the, the motor lead to come up through there, right, and connect into the, the board that was in there, right? The motor leads were on the other side. And we could pull both those motor leads up and put them in that. Uh, the motor leads are on this side, on this particular a decoder, and again depends upon the manufacturer of the decoder, but they're over here. So what I did was I brought them up through the hole, right, trying to maintain the integrity, not not getting them into. As I as I look at this, I see see I, I've got it stuck uh, right there by the by the weight. No 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 no. So I'm going to pull that up, and make sure that it's not in that weight, right? See that could have been disaster, right? So pull that up, make sure that's not in the weight. And then I'm going to pull it alongside. I put a little piece of tape here. I put a double-sided sticky tape in there, foam sticky tape, to insulate it from the frame and also uh, to, to keep it on, right? And now I've got a, a groove right beside that, right, that I can pull those two wires through and then connect them up to the, to the motor leads here. So now let me go ahead and, and connect the, the motor part of this and let's make sure that everything works. I'm actually going to connect the speaker while I've got the the uh, the uh, um, the soldering iron hot. Uh, I'm going to cut my soldering iron back now to around uh, five or uh, 300 f or 300 c, which is about 550 uh, Fahrenheit, and I'll be back. <laughs> 